the break because we will have on the line with us right now the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, Nick Sirianni. Hi, Nick. How are you today? Hey, Angela. All right, we're all absorbing the news right now about Jalen Hurts, Nick. What can you tell us? Uh, yeah, you know he sprained his shoulder. You, you guys heard. You guys heard that part of it. Obviously, he sprained his shoulder. He's uh, he's attacking his rehab right now. We'll see what uh, we'll see what happens this week. We'll see, and you know it's not not a not something we've deemed to be long term. But we'll see how we'll see how it goes out this week and uh, see what happens this week and if he'll be able to go at Dallas. Nick, was it the play late in the third quarter where he was landed out real hard and uh, he got up very slowly? Is that the play where it happened? Yeah, that was the one. That was the one. Um, so yeah, that, that one right there, the zone read play. You know, they gave us they gave us a pull read, um, and and Jalen took it. And the guy that came down the line of scrimmage and gave us the read actually did a pretty nice job of re uh, retracking right there. Um, and uh, you know, we couldn't get the the safety pin to get to the outside because he jumped outside last second. Zach Pascal get a, did a nice job of blocking him, but. You know, we thought that ball would hit outside and ended up hitting back inside, and the guy three retraced made a good play. Nick, any indication for the rest of the game that there was anything wrong with Jalen? He is a tough son <laughs> of a gun. Oh, man. Um, you know, when, when he doesn't he doesn't normally stay down, you know, so you need something like, you know, was I mean, he, he's down a little bit, then he got up, and he and the very next play he threw a stop route to Devontae on the sideline, and everyone's like, woof, all right, here we go. <laughs> and uh, he's so tough. I, I can't. I can't say enough good things about the competitive spirit of this guy. Um, you know, and, and how tough he is. Like we've been talking about that. I mean, that's why the first thing you get when you ask about Jalen Hurts is you talk about his leadership. You talk about his toughness. Um, and, and he, you know, he was in pain, and he and he played through it. And he. Uh, so no real indication because. He didn't really say anything, you know, and and uh, and he just went about about his business and and played through it. I mean, that's toughness. Uh, you know, he's meant, he's not only mentally tough, he's physically tough, and uh, that's what that's what you want from your leader on your football team. Hey, Nick, um, the city is uh, verklempt. We're upset, and we're upset because as the game was being played under very adverse weather conditions, wind and cold, against a, a, a basically a low-ranked run defense. You never ran for 24 minutes with your best r running back, Miles Sanders. Can you explain why? Yeah, you know, they, they, they devoted a lot of uh, efforts to the run game and a lot of efforts to, you know, they were doing some things that, they had normally done from a two high shell. They were doing it out of a, a closed shell, you know, and giving us one on ones. And uh, I think the indication of the games that AJ and Devonta had kind of showed you, like, hey, I mean, they like I know what they're ranked in the run game, but if a team wants to say I'm going all in and you're going to have to you're going to have to throw to beat us, you know, that's you know that's what some teams are going to do and. We're lucky enough that we're able to be balanced and to be able to adjust and say, okay, you're doing that. We're going to do this. And AJ had 181 yards. Devontae had 126 yards. Um, so we had a pretty good, you know, if they played the style that they were playing, we knew that we could hurt them uh, on the outside. Now we, we, uh, we let some things go early as far as, um, Missed some opportunities and get them in the in, in some right plays. We didn't put them in a good position to make plays here and there, um, but we threw the we threw the crap out of it because um, you know we knew that we had an advantage, and I think that showed throughout the game. Our our players of the game, um, the players don't know this yet, but our players of the game are Devonte and, and AJ. Oh, they were phenomenal! And look, you're thirteen to one, Nick. Uh, you know, no matter what we're complaining about, you're thirteen to one. But we're all concerned that. You didn't run Miles Sanders at all. You ran Quez Watkins before you ran Miles Sanders. Are you aware of that in the game while it's happening? Are you in communication with Shane where you go, Shane, we got to get the ball to 26 a few times here. What's of course, going on? And of course. And, and, you know, we need, to, we need to get just some more called runs to him early. Now, you know, here, here's what's happening, too. Like, with... With some of these zone reads, you know, the, one of the reasons Miles does a great job is having such a good year. There, it's multiple reasons, right? First and foremost, Miles is having a great year because Miles is having a great year. Secondly, he plays behind an unbelievable offensive line, there's, and there's no, you know, there's no dispute to that, you know. And thirdly, is that Jalen Hurts has such a 
you know, I was always taught you win games on the front side, you win and you win and you win big games on the back side, right? And so what does that mean? Well, you know, the pursuit's coming from the backside and you gotta find ways to slow it down. And 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 our way to slow it down is Jalen Hurts because they know at any time that he can pull the ball. And so, you know, a big part of our, our reason for uh, the, the success in the in the run game is that threat. Now, they forced us to keep it a couple times, right? We, I think we're averaging, or, well, I know we kept, I know we had zone reads called. It wasn't design quarterback runs. We didn't come out there and say, hey, this is a design quarterback run. We had a couple checks that we got to. The one touchdown um, was a check that we got to. And then, but, you know, everything else was like, hey, zone read, why? They called the backside. Oh, you gave us a pull read? Good. We feel, we feel good about that option of it, too. Um, and so, you know, that's a big part of success of our offense is that zone read ability. And now sometimes you give it and sometimes you don't. Um, and I think in that game we had seven, you know, zone reads that he had to pull. Um, on, design, uh, on the year, as we look at it, you know, we always keep track of it. We're averaging about four called four four point five called zone reads a game, right? And so, um, you know, and I know everyone's gonna say, well he carried it seventy times. Well, two of them were kneel downs. They count kneel downs. I'm not really sure why, but you know, if you're just looking at the numbers and the stats and you know, we have more kneel downs than everybody else this year, which is a good thing, right? That's the best yes. formation in football, best play in football. We love um, kneel downs, it, yes. Yeah, and, and then the quarterback sneak which has been tremendously successful for us. Um is another one that we feel that he's very safe on and, and because the guys taking the hit on the quarterback sneak is Kelsey and Isaac and Landon. They're getting, they're the ones taking the hit there and they're just paving the way for Jalen. And then you have some then you have scrambles. So really we're averaging about four point five uh quarterback runs a game and we had a couple more than that and because of the way they, they kinda um and it's not quarterback runs, it's zone reads, but we had a couple more that we pulled because of the way they were playing. And But going back to your question, uh, we have to have some that are just for miles that we don't read. Uh, and we got to get them called earlier. And so I take 100% responsibility that, that miles didn't have those. And, uh, you know, and we need to do that for him because he's one of our really good players. And so, uh, you know, and, and that's what and that's what we'll do. And uh, we got to do a better job of that part of it. Hey, Nick, you don't have to answer this next question, but you got me thinking this when I was talking to you last week about your father. You said he always gives you feedback. Did he give you feedback after this game? And if so, what did he say? He said, you're from you're from Buffalo, New York, bro. Uh, what, what, you cold? Take that coat off. That's what he said to me. <laughs> really? Yeah, I said, Dad, it was cold. He said, you grew up in that. You were born in that. You know you know what it's like to be in that. And he said, you look, you look cold. I said, it was cold. Um, so I, I'll, I'll shed the jacket next time in a cold game because my dad told me to. I had this thing <laughs> thinking that he was telling you to run the ball. What do I know? Right, but, uh, Nick, let me ask you about Gardner Minshew because it sounds like he's going to get a chance to play here. Is he ready for it? Oh, of course. This, guy's a, this guy is a great uh, you know, backup quarterback that could be starting on teams in this league, and we know that, and we're very fortunate to have him. Um, what makes a guy a really good backup quarterback? Um, you know, with him, it's that he doesn't need a lot of reps that he, you know, that he's ready to go because of the, the football IQ that he has, you know, the intelligence that he has that, he, you know, he's ready to, he's ready to roll when his number's called. Now we give, we give a lot of reps to our, our backups in general during practice so he's gotten a lot of great reps and you know we're we're, we're if he has to go we know we'll have 100 percent confidence in him because he can ball uh, i think he proved that last year i think he's proved that throughout his career every time i look at his career numbers i'm i'm just so so impressed i think i read something uh, he was like 41 touchdowns 12 interceptions that you know he's a winner he's a winner and uh that's all he that's all he knows how to do all right, if he, uh, let's say, wins on Christmas Eve and you clinched everything you're going to clinch and then Hurts is okay to play, does he still sit, Nick, because the games don't have any bearing on the outcome? You already got the bye. How are you going to handle that if he's ready? We'll always think with player safety in mind, but, you know, that's something, that's a bridge that we don't have to cross yet, so I'm not, I'm not going to cross that So uh, quite yet. But we'll have a plan, um, and, we'll, and we'll see what works out best. We'll do whatever in the best interest to 
for our football team. All right, and my last thing, and I only ask this because really from a mathematical point of view, you're still in good shape. Is Saturday's game still very important to you on Christmas Eve in Dallas? Against Dallas and Christmas Eve? Come on now. Yeah, it was, you I know, know it's still. You know it is. <laughs> you know it is. <laughs> I got it. Nick, thank you for your answers today.